Welcome back. Today we're going to look at Blood Bowl 3, two weeks in, what's changed, what's been updated, and the three different patches. Hi, so we're here, we're going to look at the three different patches for Blood Bowl 3, what's changed in the last two weeks, and the state of the game for where we are now. So let's start by going right back to two weeks ago when we first saw this roadmap. Now what we should have realised when we first saw this roadmap, and a lot of us missed in the very first quick read of it, was that pre-season was actually the release. This wasn't the early access brutal edition, this is the first three months. Season 1 of Blood Bowl 3 doesn't commence until the end of May. Now they've said some of these things may come earlier, but I can't see that season being brought forward earlier. That season is going to have what every season will have, which is a new faction, a new blood pass, new customization for that faction, and a new competitive season that we'll work through. They were also confirming then the official ladder would come in, and there would be some in-game readability optimization, which for me, not a massive thing, but actually let's work on the basis that's going to make a big difference. Three months after that, the end of the first season, which we'd already been highlighted, these would be three month seasons. Again, a new faction, new blood pass, new customization. We're going to get one of those every season. Um, then we'd get the replay mode and the spectator mode, which is quite a big thing if you're playing tournaments or you want to watch other players playing. Really good. A really good quality of life improvement and something that will definitely touch on a resume of a game after disconnection and a pause system. Some things that you probably wanted to see in the game on day one. And then for season three, again the same set of seasonal contents, but the star player special rules. We're playing Blood Bowl 3 without the star player special rules at the moment. Definitely going to downgrade Hackflem and uh, some of the others for a period of time. Also we'd see crossplay come in. Crossplay is such a good thing for the community. The ability to play across different platforms. We've already seen it uh, with having to set up multiple leagues on multiple platforms just so people can play together. And the updated rules for the board game. Now this is probably the updated rules as they are now. Not all of the rules are in there and working in detail. Hopefully the May FAQ will go in there. I doubt the November FAQ is actually going to go in there. So that was the original roadmap and that was the first place we saw. This was on the Monday and that's where we got to. So Monday, uh, two weeks ago, Blood Bowl 3 went live. Those of us that had jumped in on the Brutal Edition and pre-ordered, loaded it up, jumped in and that's when the Flame Wars started. It's fair to say that the early unlock did not go well. Uh, initially we're struggling to get into the game, crashes, uh, rules not working, in, uh, disconnections and all sorts. It was okay for the first probably 12 to 20 hours but as soon as more and more people started jumping online it was clear the servers were really struggling in some kind of detail. By the time we got to the Thursday where the game went live for everybody, oh my goodness were there problems. One thing I will say is the support team have been active and been sorting things out. Um, things like uh, the naming when you enter the game, the number of people that have put in the name in the wrong place as opposed to your gamer name or detail. They've put a form up straight away to fix that. Um, I did the same, had mine fixed within a few hours and I've got to say that was really good. And the support's been pretty active in terms of telling us what is broken and what they're going to try and do without things. So then we get into the patches. So patch note one, this came in on the Tuesday of the first release. So one day after the early unlock and still before. So this isn't a day one patch for the game. This is like a day minus two. Uh, there was some memory crashes uh, being sorted, some reroll crashes, other rare crashes, which I find hilarious. The other rare crashes already a day into pre-access were needing to be fixed. Um, soft locks, infinite loading, we saw a lot of the goblin running uh, and this was really sorting it out. Um, sorting out some foul corrections and details and some of the buttons that you couldn't click when you needed to. I was like, well, okay, that's a, that's a little bit of a start, but that really wasn't going to fix too much. 
What then happened on the Thursday was a community update. So clearly there were server issues and they recognised this and detailed this. So those who jumped in on the Monday, they, they confirmed they'd really found that there, there was a big problem. And what they did on the Thursday, I think if I remember, they correctly they took down the servers for a period of time and did some maintenance. And actually after that, they did improve. The Wednesday and the Thursday, they were pretty horrible in terms of trying to get on them. And the goblin running was happening all the time. By the Friday, Saturday, a little bit less of the infinite loading was happening. Uh, we then had an update, which was uh, also on that Thursday about what to happen. And it was quite clear that they were confirming there that just a lot of the things weren't in the game. So the competition, the competitive play just wasn't there. So what they had done is stick in the quick play uh, pre-season match to give us actually something to do other than just leagues with your own friends. And then there was also quite a bit more on the in-game shop, customization and warp zone. And a little bit around for those of you that had been play testing it for them, you're going to get some more warp zone. But where did we go from there? Well, then we went into patch note two, and this is where things started to actually get changed and really fix. So they really did improve the server response time. Um, and when we were starting to look at teams, you could actually get into your team and load them in a much better way. They fixed some of the skills interactions, so where shadowing tentacles and diving tactical were being used, pretty much that was either not happening or crashing the game out. Um, and there was a crash with diving catch where if you try to use diving catch, you were just uh, uh, getting the, the detail uh, of the game uh, all hanging up and crashing over. And actually it was getting to the point where these um, uh, these crashes were causing people not wanting to play with certain teams in detail. They also gave a little bit of a tip about how to do the disclaimer. So that was patch note two. Now hopefully you're enjoying this update and if you really are enjoying the Blood Bowl 3 content do hit like and subscribe and we'll keep going forward as the game goes towards season one. So patch note two was pretty good and then uh, Blood Bowl 3 itself went live to the the main community on that Thursday. So pretty impressive that uh, we're already two patches and a server fix in before the main community had jumped in. But it was fair to say that at that point there was lots of issues and details. So there was a big community update on the Friday. And by this time, most people had gone on, tried to play and had lots of problems. So the game had been out and they had touched on the fact there were six really big problems the monetization the pre-early the game state server faction leaks and the team itself now i'm not going to go through this in and read it out in detail but what had been clear was that there was a big pushback to the monetization system and primarily the buy one item and use it for one player and they did a big update in terms of more of this would come in the future there was then a bit addressing the leaks and the future teams. There's been leaks that there are seven more teams within the code within the game. And what they said was that they had a dedicated team working on these and there is a high focus on the next one. So not, not really what we uh, didn't expect to hear. Effectively, there are more teams coming. We know there's more teams coming. There's 29 teams to play and there's only 12 in the game. They're gonna slowly release them one at a time over the every three month period and we'll get it. We'll share more detail about the team when it's coming through. I, in a way, I'm, I'm not surprised. I don't feel like they're holding that back. They told us all the way along that they were, were going through that. There was also a bit of an error that people had got the brutal edition instead of the uh, normal edition, which meant that people were getting additional um, warp stone. So what they did is effectively give more warp stone to the uh, brutal edition, who we really should call the play testers from that one. Um, and they also touched on the servers have been a little bit of a problem and that the uh, detail of the game just wasn't working very well. There was also a bit of concern in the community that they've released two games from the uh, publisher at the same time. I don't think that's going to make much. This is a development team that was struggling with this game and we're pretty sure they were pushed to get this out of the door instead of wait another three months. So they were the main areas of discussion, although it's quite clear um, if you look at the way they spell addressing, that they need a little bit of work on their spelling. So there we've gone for um, 
addressing the updates and uh, where did we get to then? So then we went into the admin tools. So for those of you who follow Blood Bowl on Facebook and other, other community sites, you'll see there was a real big pushback from a load of leagues who basically said, we can't use Blood Bowl 3 for running our league. The admin tools just aren't there in any way at all. And actually they admitted a mistake here and said really there was a clear mistake from jumping from Blood Bowl 2 to 3 without mentioning what they wanted to do. Now they are trying to get these up and running before the end of season one, uh, before the start of season one, sorry, before the end of the pre-season. And effectively this will give additional admission, admin and commissioner controls onto league boards, the ability to add or remove teams, seed knockout competitions, advancing the round, which we've seen that doesn't work at the moment. Um, uh, admin can sort out uh, specific match results and SPP and gold and sort out tickets and details. Effectively, the competitions just aren't working very well in terms of admin. There's a touch on here that there's going to be some kind of web app to access and details. Uh, they answered the concerns by basically saying we will get to them um, and we will try and get to them before season one. Uh, we have yet to see these turn into the game. Uh, then last Wednesday, a big uh, update on the maintenance and it's worth saying this again made the servers a lot more stable, a, a lot less crashes after this. Uh, and then uh, on Thursday last week, uh, there was patch three. So we're a week after release uh, and we're into patch three and, and maintenance fix three. Um, so the accreditation for all the warp stone and additional detail went in. And then patch three, which is on PC, we should point out, and I don't think console players have received all of this yet, fixed a number of crashes around some further skills interactions, some unresponsive games when using pass. Uh, Pro was particularly looking as a bad skill, trying to re-roll a pickup uh, with Pro was a guaranteed crash failure. Uh, sorting out some player sheets, um, shorting, sorting out the chain, chainsaw not working, a big one, Mighty Blow and Claws weren't working properly at the start of the game and Frenzy and Stand Firm weren't working properly either. So good to get all of those sorted and, and working through. So we had some match play issues and again this started to make the game a bit more stable. And then the big update at the weekend which was around the customization system. So I've touched on the, on the Warpstone system uh, in my video about what doesn't work with Blood Bowl and where we are. And I think it's fair to say that most people are, are either really annoyed about it or ignoring it completely. And there'd been a lot of discussion around this. So what they've done is decided to make some changes. These haven't gone live yet for those of you that are looking at buying customization and detail. So do just wait until all these changes go through. So what will happen now is that anything you buy from a common, rare or epic item will become unlimited use for your team. So you do not have to buy 12 shoulder pads to for your 12 players. You can buy one common shoulder pad and use it over your player. You do have to buy two for the right and the left shoulder because that's the way the system works. Um, for legendary items, these are going to be effectively a reward and you're going to get these a lot less. So those won't be unlocked for limited item. They'll be for one item only. I would imagine we're going to see a few of these in, in the uh, the blood pass and detail. We'll have to work out what they're like as they go through. Um, and they're going to work out how to refund people for where they've actually spent all the warp stone in detail. To avoid being in that pile, as I said, just don't go right there now. And what they said is the first blood pass season is free for all. So everyone's going to get the first team um, unlocked for everyone including what we think are the items within the blood pass but we'll find out more of that in may uh, so that's when the first season is going to be released in the official ladder so it looks like we're all going to get a sort of a free pass into that first season in detail and that's where we've got to in terms of the game and let's have now a think about where we are in terms of detail overall so i think it's fair to say um, as we go into the game two weeks in uh, the Blood Bowl 3 launch was, as described by the publishers and the developers, didn't go quite to plan. I think it's the understatement of the Blood Bowl game. Didn't quite go to plan. It was a pretty much uh, disastrous launch. We were play testing it. We were trying to work out the fixes in detail. And we're already three patches in to the first uh, uh, system and where we go from there. 
So where we are, where we are now? Well, what I'm going to do is finish with four pros and cons about where we are, and try and be honest about where we are in terms of Blood Bowl three and playing it. So definitely, the servers are way more stable than they were on on the initial launch. When we first tried to get in on the Tuesday, it was okay, but by the Wednesday and Thursday of that week, the game was pretty much unplayable. And that was most people's first experience of it. I'm pleased to say that a couple of weeks in, that disconnects are around 20% looking at community feedback of games, which still isn't great, but is a lot better than around the 80 to 90% that it was originally, or even struggling to get into a game. So that's both a pro in terms of the servers are being fixed, but a con that there are still problems with them. It is really good that the skills are being fixed. Blood Bowl is a game where skills are all important and you level up and you get those skills. So those skills need to work. I've been put off playing a Chaos team purely on the basis of how the mutations haven't been working and causing game crashes. I haven't got time to keep playing the same game over and over again. Fix the skills, then I'll play with the team. But there are still odd interactions that aren't working. People are still finding things that don't work and desell. And clearly all the rules aren't quite implemented properly and we've got star player rules that just aren't even in the game. We know they're coming, but they're not coming for another nine months realistically. We've got admin tools coming so we can actually use our leagues and details. At the moment, most of the leagues are pretty unplayable in terms of full detail and administration of them. So you're best playing in ladders or just open season uh, play, which really doesn't give a lot of competitive edge to the game. Um, and that really is the big downside. Blood Bowl is all about playing through the leagues, playing competitions, having different builds, trying out teams and details. And if we're struggling to do that, People are going to not play the game and people are already turning off the game, getting it refunded and they're going to come back in maybe nine months time when the fixes are done. And a really big change is that change to the customization. It's not going to impact me much because I'm probably never going to go in that warp stone. I'm just going to build up warp stone and on and on again and see what I can do with it down the line. If I can get some free teams with it, that's probably the way to go. But there is still so much more to be done in the game. We've seen it within the uh, roadmap. There are some really big basic features that are missing. There are some really big basic rules that are fitting, missing. We've got new teams coming and no doubt some of those teams will have the skills or the interactions that we've yet to see. And I don't think right now we've got the confidence that that won't happen without the game having uh, game breaking crashes introduced to it. So where do I think we are for Blood Bowl 3 th two weeks in? I think the game is playable and it's definitely the best version of Blood Bowl 3 that we've had, but that's working from a really low bar. It's good fun to play, it's nice to, to get games through pretty quickly. The timing I work, think works really well in terms of the timer and the detail. Um, I like the, the sounds, I like the graphics. It's not the polished 100% game, but it was never going to be. The AI is still dumb, it's a little bit quicker, um, but the game is absolutely playable but it's playable for the fan, it's not playable for the casual person. So if you're a casual player trying to get into Blood Bowl, this is gonna be a difficult game to buy at the moment. If you're an experienced player that's been waiting desperately for this, then get in and play. Hopefully you enjoyed the update in terms of where we are in the detail. Click on like and subscribe and we'll have more Blood Bowl 3 content coming soon. All the best, happy gaming.